Mark the Movie Man here. Welcome to the final cut. Got some exciting and nervous news, if I will. I will be live on Spreecast.com a week from Friday. Yes, May 18th. Mark your calendars. 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're not at the films, why don't you check in the Spreecast to search for Movie Man's Musings and check out my first live broadcast. We'll be able to do q and I'll play some soundtracks. Uh, Spreecast even lets you bring in other people's video feeds if you want them to so you can't even get that involved uh you know I, i'm just kind of playing it by ear uh, feeling it out kind of want to do a live show and like this you know get your feedback as well of what you might want to see from the show you know put comments down below otherwise check it out may 18th uh eight o'clock central standard time that's p.m uh, uh spreecast.com movie man's musings i will be live for q and a's and and whoever else you know we'll, we'll just kind of weigh in and see what goes i'm got some things in the works for there also if you like aliens which are the subject of today's review you should check out galactic netcasts.com yes galacticnetcasts.com fantastic group of podcasts there for you to catch uh, there's a sci-fi film school I think alien invasions all podcasts of different subjects all related to aliens or sci-fi that genre and, and vein of films books and movies uh, and TV shows excuse me uh, so check them out that's galacticnetcasts.com fun group of, of people they're doing on some great shows that are deserve a watch if you're of the sci-fi uh, tastes. Now, on to today's sci-fi taste, kind of horror sci-fi, which is The Darkest Hour. Came out near the end of last year. I finally got around to seeing it, and um, let's just say it's an interesting concept. Basically, these we follow four survivors of an alien invasion that happens uh, from the perspective in Moscow. These four people are, are, are tourists in Moscow, and they happen to be part of uh, a witness to and try to survive an alien invasion as they try to get through Moscow, try to find other survivors and just get out of town alive and see what's happened to the rest of the world. Basic plot. Link down for the rest of the plot in summary. Folks, what I liked about this Darkest Hour was its concept and some of the production design, okay? I loved the aliens, the invisible energy aliens, okay? You've seen those from the trailers, all right? The guys that you can detect with light bulbs and that. I thought that was a great concept and a really cool kind of low-budget monster way to go about doing your monsters because you make them invisible and then you make them only detectable by light bulbs. So, I mean, that, that saves them on budget there, and it's a great, simple concept, and it helps uh, build some suspense in some scenes where you're seeing the light uh, light up and dim as they come closer to the character. So I love the concept of the aliens and the idea that we aren't in the U.S. during an alien invasion. We don't get to see our standard landmarks blow up during an alien invasion. No, we get to see Moscow's uh, you know, <laughs> landmark blow up during an alien invasion, which is kind of a refreshing change for most of your alien invasion films. Now, these group of uh, actors are young and up and coming. Uh, you know, they've been, a number of them been into a number of projects like uh, Emil Hirsch, who plays the main character, Sean. He was in Speed Racer. He was Speed in Speed Racer. He does a great job as kind of the, the main character, the kind of you know, leader, but not of the group. And then you got Olivia Thirlby playing Natalie. She's going to be in the upcoming Dread film. You got Max uh, Minghella, who you may recognize from The Social Network, as well as Ides of March. And Rachel Taylor, who was in the short-lived Charlie's Angels TV show, as well as uh, Transformers. Okay, so this group of four actors... I thought did well with the script that was given to him. Unfortunately, the script that was given to him was a bit schizophrenic as far as the characters and their IQ. You get points in this film where you go, wow, these characters are really smart. They're really doing some cool things. They're figuring this shit out right up to the point where something bad needed to happen. It's like the writers are going, oh, we need something bad to happen. Time to make them dumb. And the actor's IQ just drops and they figure out squat, okay? You know, they do the stupidest thing. They're smart up to a point and then it just gets stupid. It, and then after the bad thing's over, then they get smart again. You know, I mean, I, that was kind of the frustrating part of the script with that. That and the dialogue. Some of the dialogue was not exactly inspired, okay? Now, I know, you know, Alien Invasion movies done before, but you, did you have to really hit all the cliche dialogue, you know? But yeah, I did like the concept, you know? So The Darkest Hour has an interesting concept, great intentions. Its execution just is less than fantastic. One of the surprise characters I did like, though, was Veronica uh, Verdanaskaya. 
well, I hope I pronounced that right. Anyway, Veronica Vernonaskaya. She's a newcomer, only been in two films. This is her second film. She was born two years after I graduated. So that made me feel a little old. But she was fantastic as a supporting uh, actor. One of the survivors they come across is kind of mousy teenager. Loved her role in the film. Uh, and she was, you know, great performance and holding her own for only being her, like, second film. Folks, Darkest Hour gets two and a half stubs from me, okay? Not a phenomenal alien invasion film, but not exactly horrible either. If you're looking for a different alien invasion film or you've just worn out your copy of ID4, go ahead and watch Darkest Hour, okay? It's not too gory. It's got the PG-13 rating. Uh, it is a little scary and intense, so I wouldn't have the younger folks in the room at the time for the show, but it is definitely another alien invasion film because we don't have enough of those. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stuff.